Hello everyone and welcome to another Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, your host. Hey, I'm back. And I'm back on an anniversary day. I'm back right at the beginning. One of the first videos I ever did walking through my hangar with the Aurora six years ago just after Gamescom. It's been a bit and this video has taken a while to put together. I had some wild issues going on with my microphone, with it popping, with it hissing, with it cracking, with it hearing every breath I took. I think I have that fixed. I cannot guarantee it. But what I can guarantee you is that I am back. And I can guarantee you that by telling you a little bit of what's kept me away. and. Honestly, what's kept me away has been nothing more than something that we all might go through at some point in our life, and you actually don't know you're going through it until things get a little bit bad, and people set you aside and ask you. I was depressed. I had so much go on in my life over the last five to ten years that it all came to a head, and things started just ending all at once. And not bad things, ending in a good way. Um, I got past my transition, long out of it. I got past my college graduation. I got moved um, not into a better job, but my job evolved into a better job, and I have a lot more to do. My children graduated from high school, my twin boys, and started college. My daughter graduated from nursing school and passed her boards and became a nurse. And all of a sudden, there I am with all this stuff going on, and it just kind of brought me, not down, but kind of down. Because everything was done, and it, it really just overwhelmed me that now I have to start thinking about what was next. Something I should have done a while ago. But that is now in my past, and my future is coming back to you and doing the things I love to do. Let's talk about one of them now, and that's the 890 jump. We're in it. We're in the cockpit, the bridge, the flight deck. Is it the flight deck? No, it's the bridge of one of the most well done ships that I've seen to date in Star Citizen. Now, just to compare this, if you have an opportunity to rent or if you already own one, go into the 600i. And think about all that wasted space in the cockpit area. That wasted space, that wasted space is just, it, it pisses me off. It really does. I get the same feeling sitting in the pilot's seat on that ship as I do here, being able to see those that I'm commanding right there, and being able to see things around me. But what I don't get is when I get out of the seat on that 600i, it's like I'm looking at a dance hall. But over here, everything seems to be done exceedingly well. Everything seems to fit perfectly together. And this cockpit, this bridge, this command deck is just amazing. All right, if we go down these stairs and we go to here, you have a couple of doors that you could open and close. They're for avionics. And then you come down into the passenger deck. This is one of the decks where the passengers will be. And of course, passengers can hang out up here, talk and look out onto the stars. If there was that much debris around here, believe me, it would all coalesce. It's gravity, gravity is king. All these things over here would never be able to just hover this close to each other. When you see an asteroid field in real life, they're actually thousands and thousands of miles between asteroids, not built like this. Um, maybe it's thousands and thousands of yards between them. Hmm, one of the two. But gravity would win here. These big ones that are sitting here would suck up all the little ones and you'd start to have planetary bodies again. This is pretty, pretty, pretty. I like it. So coming down the port side, and we're gonna go aft, past the chessboard, and another area to sit in, past sculptures that are exactly the same, or photos, they're like artwork on the wall, 
and into the captain's quarters. Now the captain's quarters, I have a couple of issues with. First issue is, I like it. So, I mean, I'm gonna talk about things that could change in it, but I like it. And I don't know why I like it because things seem to be too compartmentalized and too symmetrical. This area, the symmetry here needs to be broken. This area could be a nice little place to sit down and relax and talk to somebody. But I think this space over here should be something completely different. Maybe build it up in a motif of like ancient earth and make it a nautical area. Put a sextant on the wall, put a telescope, a copper telescope over here and uh, maybe a globe in the corner and make it a place where you can stand up and look at some old nautical items. So this space I do like, it does make sense. And this space is, of course, just a foyer. That's all it is. But I'm thinking that maybe there should be some stowage underneath here on either side, but that's only if we were in real life, not in a virtual rea virtual reality. Nice drinks, cigars, what looks like uh, might be a coaster for shot glasses. Nice little desk over here. That desk is so cool, I wish I had one of them. I think that desk is pretty pretty amazing. I've sat in chairs like that though, they're not very comfortable. And the view he has from his office is pretty nice. Huge amount of wall space to put things on. And again, they're working with the symmetry there and I probably would break that symmetry up. One of the first things many interior designers do is they try to break that symmetrical approach to everything. Things tend to look a lot better when you have things that flow better and aren't symmetrical. All right, we come down the stairwell over here and to our right is going to be an area where we can stow our clothes. We have the captain's bed with two side tables built into the headboard, which I think that headboard is an accident waiting to happen in real life, but it works here. Mainly because if you actually were to fall asleep with your head up against the headboard and went to go get up, you'd bang your head on the shelf above. But otherwise, it's actually visually pretty amazing to look at. And of course, there's a display for you to watch. Now, we're going to show one bathroom on this journey through the ship because all bathrooms look alike. You have storage in here, closets to put away anything that you want to. You have mirrors and displays. This is a display. This is a mirror. We are still vampires, by the way. And of course, you have this bath um, shower tub. I say it's a tub because it looks like, well, maybe you're supposed to sit there. I don't know. Plus, there's all these jets, and then there's a drain on the floor. But see the jets? I'm wondering if something comes up. Maybe it does. Maybe it fills up right to that spot right there. Who knows? And you got your toilet. We're going to continue our journey in this direction. And it's going to end up in the captain's galley. Again, built from the perspective that anyone sitting at the table has to be able to sit down and look to their left or right and see the beautiful view. We have another fish tank in here. You'll see a lot of these all throughout the... Uh, ship hopefully we have some fish to put in there sooner or later we do have fish right now they were selling fish for quite a while when we had the fish tanks that we could put into our hangers um, when hangers were important when you had nothing else to do in the uh, universe that is and this little galley area here where a crew member could finish preparing food and get you all set up for your meal it's just a nice look. Let's get into the corner over here and look this way. Let's take that as a photo. That's good. I like I like the captain's galley. So as we leave the captain's area, we've been up front or forward and we've seen the bridge. Now we're going to pass down the starboard side and we're just going to stop right here because yeah, this is an amazing look. We're going to talk about this view from down below. 
So we're going to go one half deck down. And we are on the entertainment deck, the activity deck. Well, it's one of the activity decks. We're going to have two staterooms here. You're going to have one on the left, one on the right. All these staterooms are fleshed out, so we're going to go through this one. We're not going to go through the staterooms on the bottom floor, mainly because these have some assets spread around that make them look better. So you have assets out, like sculptures and books, vases and games and you know things to hold your cigars in. Another fish tank, like I said, you're going to see a lot of these. And of course, the bed, which it looks like a queen size bed. It looks like one of those really amazing IKEA beds that are really low to the floor. You don't have one of those big giant headboards that you're going to bang your head on, but it looks like you have some futuristic Mark, Martin Logan type speakers or just a sculpture. And you have more things on your shelf over here to make it look personalized. You have a bathroom that will be exactly like the bathroom the captain has, just there's assets in this one to make it look good. Okay. And then this will be mirrored on that side of the ship, so the port and starboard side both have a cabin on this deck. This will bring you down to the hangar, so if you were leaving the ship and going home, and you were taking a shuttle off the ship, an 85X or something like that, you would go down to a waiting area below that we will go to a little bit later. If we turn in this direction, we're going to go into the bar area, which is where we're going to have most of our parties. And there are four of these bathrooms that are really small, really just for your guests or for people attending any of the meals on the ship. So you have this bar. Now think of it, you only have room for about eight or ten passengers. This area is for people to come to for major parties. So you can have a lot more room. Maybe seating 40 to 50 people throughout this deck. And that way you can have a nice little party. And we have a bar that I think is very, very, very well done. CIG has made this bar amazing. Now the dining area I think is just missing one thing and that's right now they have it set up that everybody's in these two tops over here and I think that really they should turn this area right here into a nice little booth that can handle four. You could probably put that right over here. And this area over here which is the boardroom I think the boardroom is something that you can fix by putting a, putting a bulkhead in on either side of that wall in front of us. So an extended look at this area, maybe not, maybe we do leave it open. I just think that there maybe should have been some privacy here because I envision this ship being used by many people as an org ship. So you would have officer meetings up here and since the game uses VOIP and does it based on distance, you know, spatial distance. I think everybody at this table will hear each other, but I think everybody behind them might be able to hear them too. So there might be a need for privacy here, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I really think that that's the only criticism I could give. Otherwise, I think this area is done amazingly. I love just being able to see the ship itself and everything behind it. I think it's amazing. Yeah, that ship, that, that planet would be molten from all of these rocks hitting it. There's no doubt about that. Oh my god, this is so cool. Yeah, it's amazing the views that we like to get from space that are gorgeous, but just wouldn't happen because of physics. <laughs> we're going to go back out this way. And we're going to go through this hatch. And we are now in an area that I, I think probably could be done a tiny bit better. 
We could have done so many cool things here. We could have like a little dumb waiter over here that would bring all the dirty dishes down to the uh, the galley below. Um, that is something that you will find is that this is this ship is done very well for use, but it's not done very well for cleaning up from use. Like there is no big area to do dishes or anything like that. And you know, in the long run, who cares? But they have a lot of cool things in here. Like, they put bathrooms everywhere in this place. But, you know, are you really going to use a bathroom in a video game? That's the question. All right, we're going to continue our walk down the stairwells. And you're going to have a stateroom on either side that will be exactly like the staterooms up on the upper floors. Um, I'm going to go walk back first. I want you to get a little bit of a look at this. This over here... This is a, a lift that will bring you down planet side. We're not planet side right now. We're in space, so you wouldn't use this to board the ship in space. You would either come aboard on an 85X, or you would come aboard through one of these tubes over here. And over there is an airlock that looks out onto the space outside. And that airlock is how you would get on if you are coming on at a space station. Needless to say, it's the same regardless of how you come on. This is going to be the what you see when you walk onto the 890 jump for the first time. And you're going to walk through this gorgeous space, which I think is done extremely well. I do think a couple of a couple of photos of maybe Origin's home world or something on either side of this would be awesome. Or maybe that's where you have pictures of the captain and the crew, so people know who they are. One or the other, but done really well. So you come through here, and you walk straight ahead, and this is telling you this is a spa and pool. So this area right here gives room for two to five people to have great conversations in this private space. If we walk around here, we have two of the things. We're going to come back this way in a little bit, I think. Two of the things, one on either side, so one on starboard, one on port. And these are your escape boats. They call them life rafts. I'm not going to go on here because they're tough to get on. Oh, maybe I will. So they're tough to get out of here if you walk on. But we didn't walk on. We kind of hobbled on. These look like they would be okay if you were bailing out, I guess, somewhere that's easy to get to. But if you were bailing out in deep space, there's no provisions anywhere that I see. Yeah, it might be a very, very bad stay. Or maybe they just put you into suspended animation while you're on it. All right, let's close up that tube. Okay, there's a lift that goes down to engineering over here. Oh, this isn't a lift. That's a ladder that goes down to engineering. This is a lift that goes down to engineering. We're going to go through here. We're going to close the door. Now, another place where I think that they could do well is right here. You're coming out of this area, and really, you see under the stairwell. I don't know if that's good. I think maybe a piece of matching decor to back this area over here would have been better. Maybe not. I, I haven't seen it the other way, but... Yeah, I, I don't know if I would want that area to be left open like that. All right. Before we go any further, I just want to give you this look right here. Stand here and look straight up. And then walk up the stairs like you would be walking up the stairs in real life. Just look up. Tell me that when you get to the top of these stairs, that this isn't the most gorgeous ship out yet. I just love being able to see everything outside. It's just amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay, we're going to walk forward. And we're going to go into a very uniquely designed and kind of uselessly designed area, but cool as hell anyway. 
This is your spa and pool. You have a hot tub over here. Now you have to ask yourself a question. If you ever lost gravity, would you want to be in this room? And that goes a hundredfold, maybe a thousandfold for this room. Pools in space. Is there a force field that holds the water in? Is there a cover that comes over it? How does the water stay in it? Especially when the ship is pulling G's. Think of it that way. When you're maneuvering the ship, no matter what you do, that water is going to want to come over the side. So I think it's amazing, though. I'm pointing things out, but in the same breath. I really want to say, but it's so freaking cool. Yeah, we don't follow physics in video gaming sometimes. I wish, if this is the extreme front of the ship, I wish they had glass looking out the front. But I'm not sure if this is the extreme front of the ship or not. So you do have a couple of changing areas. They're mirrored, so both sides, or I should say it's the same on both sides over here. And then you have crew kitchen and then the hangar. So you could actually get down to the hangar deck if you needed to. Pretty cool. All right, we're going to start in the back of the ship. So we're going to go through here. We're going to go through here. And we're going to take this down to the bottom level. I think we're on the right no, yeah we're on the right level so we we wanted to go one more level down which was engineering so we're gonna make belief with air that elevator would have come out right there you can see it beat us to it see so if we came out of here right took that elevator down and came out of here we would see the port side main thruster or power plant these are the engines this is what powers or propels the ship through space and it is made by Origin, and it's pretty amazing. And I love this look right over here. Makes me wonder, are they making any matter in this machine? Probably not. It's just there for good looks. And man, does it look good. So you have this big open space, hugely open space for all your cargo and for some of the systems. Now, because you're on a luxury ship, everything is all the tubes and wiring and knobs and switches and bells and things that could go wrong are going to be behind panels. So you're going to see a ton of these engineering panels around the ship when you walk it yourself. Back here, we know that this is the jump drive because it tells us. We also know that that's for fire extinguishers because we see them in real life. And we also know that this is life support. Now, it's very possible that this is a huge shield generator or that there's one shield generator here and one shield generator here and that this over here is developing the artificial gravity on the ship. One of those two things is correct. And something is here. We just don't know what. All right. Now, this is an airlocked bay, and you can send the elevator down. Actually, I'm going to go jump on the elevator. <laughs> so I want, I want to look up, and I want to show you. Now, things go a little bit fast on here. Like, I think something that big is actually going to close a little bit slower, and I think the anticipation of it closing slower is actually better for somebody that might buy one of these. All right, so we're in space all of a sudden. We just need to go. It's one thing that happens is your mag boots actually disengage when you're out in space on these things. So we're going to go up, back up. You can see the airlock up there. You can actually see there's glass over there, so we can see right through. 
All right, we are trying to stand up. Yep, we stood up. That hurt us a little bit. And we're getting back up to our main deck. All right. So let's go jump up here. Now let's go through the passenger side of the ship. We're on the starboard side of the ship. And you have a couple of wet, well, you have four weapon tracks back here. Really don't know what goes in there. Probably missiles, maybe? Or is it the weapons racks? We have guns in the turrets, so maybe it's ammo. So right here, I think there should be a bulkhead just to keep the passengers separated from the rest of the mechanics of the ship like I don't think weapons racks should be accessible by people that are your guests so there should be a bulkhead here okay right where this crosses wherever the mahogany slash teak is I think is awesome so this comes from the hangar deck goes up to the spawn pool and then finishes on one side of that bar that we were on before if we walk around this way, we come into a long hallway, and this passageway has one thing in it, and it's the med bay. Now, I think the med bay was done extremely well. I can see it being fleshed out later. It's kind of like when you buy a house, there's nothing in it. So right now, we don't see it with all the assets installed. So we don't see the trays of surgical equipment. We don't see the drugs that are going to be in the drug cabinet. We don't see a desk or waiting area. There's a lot of things we just don't see over here. But basically, they never said we were going to get a big med bay. But we do have a med bay that's big enough to take care of a passenger or two or a crew or two coming ill or getting hurt and then helping them to repair it in whatever this ring does. It's pretty awesome. If we go out and through this door, we get to the waiting area. I talked about this before. People are going to be coming and going all the time, especially when you have guests that are not your guests on the yacht, but guests for a party. This is going to be the way they're going to come on and off the ship, and they're going to wait here and use this display to see when their ride will be leaving or arriving. So, nice little wait waiting area. I think there should be a display or some kind of entertainment over here, but maybe some music, something. Otherwise, done well. Now these airlocks are broken, and I'm only going to say that because that door opens before that one closes, and this is an airlock control. I'm sure they're just doing that because we're in a video game. Got to keep reminding myself that. All right, we can play basketball with one hoop. It's all right. I used to do that as a kid in my driveway. And we're on the hangar deck. Now, I do want to say that the hangar deck is mostly this area that's around the ship over here. And then what you have in the center is the flight deck, hangar deck combo. All right, I want to show you something right now. There are two of these. Okay. And one brings you up to the turret up here, and then you get to the turret, and now you're forward. I don't know why that wasn't just one, you know, just one little move. It might have to do with where the turret is. But the turret is on the front of the ship, and we can actually come, come around and look at the bridge, fire anybody that would be attacking from behind or up top or up high. Yeah, nice little turret. Can we get an outside view? We can. And we're going to put that away. And the turret goes down. All right. Now we have to back our way out of this place. I wonder if it's the cook that gets to be in the turret. Back down to the hangar. And here is the flight slash hangar deck. It has room for 285Xs. I wonder if it's just 285Xs or something bigger like a 
Hmm, what would hold a few more people? A Terrapin. I'm trying to think. Is there anything else that's like the Cutlass? A Freelancer, but the Cutlass is tremendous. I don't think the Cutlass would fit in here. Would it? I don't know. I can actually see it almost fitting in here. So this does go up, all the way up. Um, the room is... Well, the, the two airlocks are at the back of the hangar bay. Those are the ones I was criticizing because both doors were being open at the same time. So that's pretty cool, the way that those open. And now this just rises up. Rise. And then you can land your ships here. Yeah, it's pretty nice. All right. There's the bridge up there, and that's the boardroom right there. We saw both of these. See the boardroom? Okay. There's a hatch over here. I'm sure it's some kind of weapon. I think it's one of the auto cannons. All right, we're back on. Let's get us down to the bottom. Go down. And this time we're going to look up because I want to catch the I want to catch the way that the doors close. I think all the big giant doors that are in the game are set to close just a little bit fast. These things would weigh they would be heavy. See how far See how fast things slide out? And you could hear it repressurizing when that happens. That's pretty good. All right, we're going to go through this door now. And it's going to bring us into the crew crew area. Now, I think these are all going to be spacesuits, OK? And one of the cool things is that CIG designed this ship correctly instead of incorrectly, like the 600i. I still love my 600i because it looks cool. But the interior just sometimes it irks me we've got this retro arcade machine which looks like it's set up to pay missile command for a left-hander you have a pool table it looks like you have two mini tables and a nice seating area that would only exist in a game because in real life you might have longer tables that's just so people could walk around it in the game and you have a cooler this cooler would be for any of your beverages that you might have. And then out this door, to the right, we go into the crew compartment. The crew compartment's pretty awesome. You have bathroom area, like you do on the 600i. So you're going to have a shower, bath, well, a toilet, a sink, a mirror that you still can't see yourself in, and an area to change. And then across from these, you have seven, count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these rooms. That each one of them has their own bed. And this is another thing I wish they were able to do for the four crewmen on the 600i. Give them a private space for them to call home when they're crewing on the ship. Don't just make them have to look at each other while they sleep at night all the time. This is good. like it. And of course you have an area for them to eat, and you have an area for them to gather, talk, watch. I envision ottomans in here or other items like that so you can actually stretch out. In this area, think about it. This area right here, this is where you have your food. So your food is going to be right here. And it looks like you have a couple of microwaves and an assortment of cutlery and dishware. Now the kitchen works and doesn't work for me. Okay, I think that the I don't think that it's very well 
it's not very well planned, okay? Now, it works from the perspective of, are you really going to be cooking in here? Let's just make something cool. But if you are a chef in this kitchen, there's a lot of steps to make a meal, and you're going to have to walk all over this kitchen. It's not designed around productivity. It's designed around, oh, where does this go? And people would put it in. I'm going to give you a couple of for instances. These two storage areas are far away from where you would be doing most of your prep, which is right here, right? Now, they couldn't go over here because you have a door and you have an elevator. But they could have gone along the walls over here. That would have been good. The stovetop is over here. When your hood should have it right over here. So you should really have your stovetop here and your tom tomatoes and knives and fruit where this pot is. That's about all the critical messages I'm going to give you from that one area. In this area, the whole thing just does not look like it's designed well. I would have left this wall open and that wall open, or this wall open and that wall open, and just made this whole side over here refrigerated storage, and made the rest of this area just shelves for dry, dry storage. There's a lot of wasted floor space in here, and if you've ever walked in a walk-in in a restaurant, there's very little wasted space in a walk-in. There can't be wasted space because you have to fit all of the prepped food and all of the non-prepped food and oh, you have to fit so much into one of those restaurants. A ton. But, you know, I'm going to say it again. It's a virtual game and sometimes we just have to take what we can get because we're not actually working in it in real life. When you come out the store, you're right in the meat and potatoes of the lower decks. Okay, first off, these are where the escape pods are for the crew and possibly passengers if they're able to get here before the crew. I don't think that that would happen, but they can. But you have another important element in this last room, and this last room is the battle bridge. For any of those who have watched Star Trek The Next Generation, the battle bridge was used when the saucer section would disengage from the main body of the Enterprise and it would allow the Enterprise to actually still stay in a fight. I, I don't see that here. I really don't. It might work. It might not. Oh, let me tell you the truth. I think this area is cool. I think it works. I think it's well done. There's a couple of questions I have about it. Like, why does this person have to be seated all the way back here? Why can't they move up against the screen over here? But I think it works. I think all of this works. Is this person on some kind of ejection seat? Why are they, like, up on this plateau? What is going on here? But nonetheless, I think it's amazing. I think that this works well. Again, same thing here, too. I love the fact that this this area. Look at it. It goes back. I get into it. And it slides forward. I mean, and then I get all the different displays that I would get. I am, I am happy about this release. It gives me some hope about future releases, specifically the Carrick and then the Polaris, because those are two huge, well, two big ships that I've purchased. And with them doing as well as they've done on the 600i, I'm starting to feel, well, not the 600i, the 890 jump, I'm starting to feel that they've turned the corner and really thought about how they can design their ships better to be more realistic and to be more useful. And I think the 890 jump is a huge step in the right direction. I just wish that CIG would look at this and bask in the glory of the success that they had in it and take a look at things like the 600i and go back and fix it. I mean, they did do the same thing to the 300 series, and although I was critical about it in the beginning, I absolutely love my 300. I think my 325A and my 315P are two of my favorite ships at this point. I love their look. And they work. They work in the universe, and that's important. 
and they work in real life too. All right, we're going to walk out here and we're going to close it out. Thank folks, it's been six years since I started doing these videos. Six long years, and I know I've been away. I've been suffering a bout of depression, but I am back. And let's just say that these are going to become more regular and they're going to have more content and you don't have to listen to me. All you have to do is watch and see. So if you like it, click the thumbs up button below. If you do subscribe, please click the notification icon so you get notified of all my future videos. And understand that today that's not just enough. You may want to go and look at my social media and join my social media so you do get notified of my future videos. The reason for saying that is Google has changed the notification algorithm and you don't always get notified of every video because they don't want to spam you. They don't want to have you have a million things in your inbox. So if you do like my videos, be sure to join in on my different social networking. And I think we've come to the end. I think this is beautiful, wonderful, gorgeous, and I'm pretty happy about it. And with that said, you all be safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon.